Righto guys, so you come in from here and the first thing we want to remove is this right here. Okay, now in order to remove this, what you need to do is come in right here and you will see this here. You've got to remove these two plastic 10 mils, right? There's one on this side and then if you go to your left all the way here, you're going to see another one right there. Okay, we remove these two with just like a 10 mil. All right, and once you remove that and you remove this one as well, I've already loosened it here, but you, you get the gist of it, okay? I just used a ratchet and a 10 mil like this, and then I broke it loose and started to remove it. Once you remove this, you want to get something like a trim removal tool, right? Just like this. So what you need to do now is come underneath this, and you got one, two, three, four clips under here. Okay, so what you need to do is get under here and just pop it right, against the car and push and then it just pops it off. You just do it nice and gently and eventually you end up with this. So when you go to take this off, what you need to do is lift and then take it out like that. Because as you can see here, you've got these fork light mounts. Right, so it's, it's kind of like a fork and this is where the bolt was for the plastic 10 mils. After you've done this, you have these other two 10 mil bolts right here. All right, inside here, you're going to see two 10 mils. All right, so just here, if you look inside, you can see there's a 10 mil. Now, I've already removed mine, but you just have to use an extended 10 mil so a really long deep socket like this and that's going to allow you to clear this bolt and then you just put it on and you crack it off mine was actually just snug on by hand so i was able to just break it loose like this and then undo it and then once you get most of it just use your hand and then spin it there we go do the exact same thing to this side, just here. And once you do that, you're pretty much good for the inside of the car. Now we need to work on the bottom of the car and each corner. Right here, whatever is attached to the bottom under here, we are going to start removing screws. Now I've got mud guards on here, so I'm gonna take that off. Also, we need to work on whatever is holding it here. There's normally usually just like 10 mil bolts, so we need to get to them. So what you do to one side, you're going to do to the other side. Remember that. You wanna make sure you're removing it properly, that way it doesn't snap any clips or any retainers. I'm also going to remove the tire, that way you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and how it all comes out. So we have a 10 mil plastic nut again and two clips now you if you don't have a mud guard then you don't have to worry about this but you will still see this 10 mil and these two clips so we'll just remove this 10 mil and now we'll remove these two clips you just need a flat head or if you have a trim remove tool then you could use that get our trim removal tool in just like this and pop it out get it out just like that it will come out same for the top just like that and if it doesn't come out just work it out like that don't forget to push this back in just so that you have it as one piece don't want to lose it my mud guard is going to pop off but we also have one more at the very bottom we're going to have some more underneath here so i'll show you now you've got another t20 torque screw screw here so just get a t20 remove it once it comes off this mud guard's going to come off just like that this side's all done now. Just come to the back more where the exhaust tips are. As you can see, we have another T20 right here. We remove that. And then we need to remove whatever else is holding our rear diffuser on. So we'll come back here to the side. This 10 mil bolt right here, which secures our diffuser. So we're just gonna undo this. Okay, which allows the diffuser to come off like that set that aside and we'll do the same to the other side and break it loose undo this and then pull down our diffuser so it unclips just like that then we do the same thing to the other side right here where we have another t20 torque screw and we undo that remember guys as i stated at the start 
What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Now, here's our other T20 right here. Undo it. There we go. We need to take off this other tire so we can remove the exact same 10 mil nut and the two push clips. We have this 10 mil plastic nut again. Take that off. All right, so when these become like a pain to remove, I use this tool here, which I got. And all you do is you clip underneath it and then you pry it out slowly, as you can see. And if it gets really annoying, what you can do is just cut it right off. But I don't need to do that. And then look at that, it just comes off. Now that we have all those screws, nuts and everything removed from the bottom and where the diffuser connects to the car, we need to come on this side here and we need to peel this back to reveal a 10 mil bolt right here. To remove that 10 mil bolt, and it's basically going to allow us to start pulling this rear bumper apart. So all I use is a 10 mil ratchet here and just start to break it loose and you'll see the minute you take this off the rear bar is going to be really loose because this is what secures on both back quarter panels no need to rush it just take your time and then once you have it really loose you can just take off your ratchet and undo it by hand and that will allow you to just simply remove it like so as you can see and that is it there right there with this side removed we'll go do the other side now our 10 mil will be just in the corner here just like before now we'll break it loose now go slow because you don't want to be hitting your rear bumper and start scratching it all over so just go nice and easy there's a lot of dirt in here look at that there's our other 10 mil and that's it right so what you need to do from here is i want to bring you in real close okay you need to push in pull down and then out so you push it in you pull down and then you pull it out and it will unclip. Don't be alarmed. Don't be scared. It will unclip the first time you've done it in a while. There you go. And you just follow that all the way out. So you're kind of pushing down and then pulling out because it clips over the top here. Okay? Very important. So if you have a look here, you can see that you've got these holes. But inside, there is a tab that clips over the top of it. Okay? So you can see there, there's the tab there that clips in here. And then just work your way around all the way around the back. All right, we're going to go to the other side now and do the same thing. So here we are on the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pull down and pull out towards us. There we go. See how it just unclips like that? Really easily. Look at that. That went all the way to the light. See? And look at that. It even came off the back. So now... Do not just take it off now. Grab like a piece of cardboard and put it on the bottom so it has something to sit on. Luckily, I had one of these sitting around. It's one of these uh, fake glasses. I'm going to put it here so that my rear bar can sit straight on it. Most of the rear bars are already off. So what we're going to do is just work on the other side. But as you can see, I've got this little fake glass down the bottom here. That's just so that the rear bar can sit on it. The last thing you want is to do this and have it completely scratch the rear bar. Now that you have the fires off, this part is pretty simple. So grab it from the bottom and just pull it out. Alright, see how all this is off already? I'm just going to do this slowly and it will just come off. There we go. Got that off. There we are. Nice and easy. One person. I just did all that by myself and you know what? It works just fine. As you can see, you still have this cable that's still attached. Okay, so we need to come inside here and unplug that. So this is the cable that you need to unplug because it runs through here and plugs into the back of your rear parking sensor. In order to remove it, you've got a tab just here. Just push on this tab and pull it straight down. And that's it. Because it is attached to the rear bar and the rear parking sensor, what you need to do is now feed it through. Now the easiest way to do this is to push the entire rubber through as well. Okay, you can see it just there. I just pushed it on through really easily with my hand and it pushed it through. Now you just feed your cable all the way through, just like that. Now, your cable simply comes out of this hole right here. You pull it on through and that is the entire rear bar removed. 
with the rear bar off, you can really start to understand why these were so long because it had to go through the back here. As you can see, it had to go through here and then be long enough so that you could still fit the 10 mil nut on top. And as for the rear bar, that's the modification I did because my rear diffuser would not fit on unless I used a longer bolt. So that's the reasoning for that long bolt right there. The reason why it was so important to have this grommet here is because this is exactly where we're going to run our cables for the blind spot detectors, the BSDs. The whole point of doing this was so that I could run the blind spot detectors into the car. Say you're going to use something like one of those open and close valves for your exhaust system, you could definitely come through here and run your wires. Now I'm most likely just going to run it through here because it's a lot bigger and I can just pierce a little hole through there and push my cabling through. That's going to help immensely with running any type of electricals and in this case it's really going to help with the blind spot detectors. So there you have it guys, that's how you remove the rear bar of your W204. And this is what it all looks like when you have your rear bumper removed. Just so you know that you didn't break anything or you know nothing's out of place. Just ensure that your entire rear looks like this inside out. Everything looks really good. In the next video, we will be installing the blind spot detectors, routing the cables and installing either the beeper inside the car. So be sure to stay tuned for that video. As you can see here, I've gone back to the standard tail lights, but not a big deal because I will be upgrading to the newer style LED lights, but that's going to be another video because the LED lights that I bought for this car failed and after a while i started to get errors at first i did not have any but then after a while the errors came i'm just going to get the oem style factory facelift tail lights and then i'm just going to get them coded to suit my car with the help of the same guy that helped me do my instrument cluster plenty more to come guys so be sure to stay tuned i really hope you found this video helpful guys and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up like share comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one this is mike with mikey's vlogs Signing off. Bye for now.